We are getting rare access to hear directly from Washington, D.C.'s top prosecutors tackling cases just like that. While it's a topic many people don't want to discuss, their message is an important one for everyone to hear. And it's why these assistant U.S. attorneys sat down with me for this story you'll see only on 7. This all-women team of prosecutors might just have some of the toughest jobs the court system has to offer, even in a place like Washington, D.C. And they didn't just get assigned it. They asked for it. Raise your hand if you sought out this job. You all wanted this. Why? It's incredibly motivating to be able to work with a child and help a child achieve some sort of justice. It's also rewarding knowing that you've taken somebody off the street that one has harmed a kid and could potentially do it again. They are the Child Exploitation and Human Trafficking Unit, tasked with some of the most sensitive and often hard to imagine cases. I think there are a lot of offenders, probably more than people realize, and these crimes go unnoticed a lot of the time because we have people who travel from places like Virginia, Maryland, West Virginia, into the District of Columbia in order to abuse children. So that makes D.C. somewhat unique. If you guys are busy, that means there are a lot of problems out there. How busy are you? We're all busy. <laughs> <laughs> we get a lot of leads coming in, um, especially through our partners at the FBI's Child Exploitation and Human Trafficking Task Force. They have a large unit there that works undercover online to kind of root out people that are trafficking child pornography. And so they are constantly chatting with people who are trying to trade child pornography online, produce it, abuse children. It would be remiss to overlook the fact that you're all women. Why do you think that is? I think it's it's just easier sometimes for women to kind of you know speak to victims in these cases, gain their trust, build rapport with them, um, and for victims to feel comfortable making disclosures to us. These are really difficult things to talk about. As a team of five, they have to rely heavily on each other. After all, if there was enough time in the day and enough funding, they could easily be a group of 10. We've all grown fairly close. We all respect one another. And I think we all bring different things to the table when it comes to investigating and prosecuting these cases. But their goals are all the same. Protecting those kids, I mean, even beyond the justice that you can get in court, what a lot of our investigative teams and we do is actually rescue kids, if we can, from dangerous situations. And there's nothing more satisfying than that. With new challenges, like the online surge in activity during COVID that never let up, and the advent of AI, abusers using artificial intelligence, this team is equally determined. And with one parting warning. Do you have a message for predators? A lot of people are hiding behind computer screens and phones now, um, engaging in this kind of behavior, but uh, we have a very robust law enforcement team here. and. If you are out there engaging in this kind of behavior, we are looking for you, we will find you, and we will prosecute you to the fullest extent of the law. Now, one other piece of advice and a warning that they have for everyone watching tonight. The biggest misconception is that the abuser is always, or at least often, not a stranger jumping out of the bushes, but instead, it is many times just someone who the family already knows and has their trust. These cases cross all lines of race, religion, and economic status.